end of every unit, your teacher has a chance to teach a lesson about other lessons and their context to enhance. But what do you suppose our teacher has to do? He skips the lesson and makes his present a uh, digital LEQ. Elocution needs historical evidence, reason that can corroborate and advance. A complex thesis that Dr. John P. Irish would admire. Then we drop the screencast like a single that is fire. Scoot and create a screencast for you to like, subscribe, and share. We know you've had all the John Green, Steve Helmer you can bear. If we have the most views by 10 p.m. Eastern on the fifth day, we earn 500 bonus points, which virtually guarantees an A. Without much more, much more, much more fan do or do, we present, present, present our digital, digital LEQ. Hello everyone, today my group and I are going to be talking about the process of industrialization in Asia and we're also going to get in depth on how other parts of the world had an impact on the growth of their economy. Thesis. Industrialization came into Asia through economic, military, and political strains from places such as Europe and America. However, Asia benefited by having influence on growing labor, meaning better opportunities in service like agriculture, domestic work, and construction. Asia also have risks such as disease and overpopulation that worked against industrialization. But despite the negative influences of industrialization, Asia did gain benefits increasing volume of world trade and producing many goods. Our big questions are, what influence did North America bring to Asia during their own industrialization? What type of technologies helped the productivity during the Asian industrialization? What influences did Europe bring to Asia during their own industrialization? So next we have our contextualization. We said that the United States and Europe have been at the forefront of the industrial revolutions over the last two and a half centuries, while Asia was one of the latecomers to this revolution. The first industrial revolution began in Britain with the invention of weaving machines, most famously the spinning jenny, in 1764 for the textile industry and expanded through other transformative inventions such as the steam engine, railroads, and machine tools. The second revolution took place in Europe and the United States between the late 19th and early 20th centuries and was the main revolution where Asia became involved. Japan's government created state-led capitalism assisting industrial and business growth in a variety of ways. Our first historical evidence is a primary source, and this first primary source comes from the front page of the New York Journal, and it is titled Kill Everyone Over 10. This political group cartoon was created on May 5th, 1902 by Davenport Homer, and the image and the title shows an, an order given by General Jacob H. Smith when going on to an attack during the Philippine-American War and to kill everyone over 10, and as you can see in the image, everyone is getting lined up that is over the age of 10, no exceptions, and they're either getting whipped, shoot at, as shown in the image. The reason this connects to our thesis is because the Philippine-American War was one of the ways that North America was taking over control of countries in Asia, and it's one of the ways that they brought the influence of industrialization in Asia. Since the United States pretty much had control over the Philippines, they were able to bring their own industrialization into the Philippines that later influenced the, the countries around the Philippines. They weren't granted independence by Congress until 1945. We believe that this source connects to our theme three governance because it shows how the United States took over the Filipino government just to to bring their own type of industrialization. This was a power used by the United States since governments exercise power in different ways and, and for different purposes. One purpose they did it in this source was to expand its, in, it, its industrialization. This source offers a point of view because it was from that time period through when all this was happening. And it gives us and it shows us what people saw 
in between that time period. From this source, we get information on who was involved, what they were, whether it was a big power, a little power, or no power at all. We get to see what the public thought of the issue of rising, and we also get to see what the effects were. In this case, the effects were that many children, even though they were over the age of 10, they were still being persecuted. We see how those in the Philippines were getting beat and tortured, and we see how the United States was coming in and taking over. For our next piece of historical evidence, we have a quote from the American Interest that explains how the wages in China were low and the working conditions were not great. The source goes on to explain how Bangladesh had been a hot spot for work ever since 12 representatives went to the government to protest and how they would start to leave the factories to find a better place to work. Bangladesh went on to raise their wages for people who had more experience in factories. This quote relates to the thesis because it shows how people were able to support their families and the sacrifices they had to make to adapt to the working conditions. Workers had to work 12 hours a day for six days a week or else they would have to potentially lose their jobs. Employees fix these conditions by protesting and leaving their jobs to find something better. The quote relates to theme four economic systems because as people were leaving their jobs to find a better opportunity, it affected the amount of goods that were going in and out of Asia. This second primary source comes from the Library of Congress, but was originally made by J.S. Puge in August 23, 1899. It is titled, Putting His Foot Down. What this political cartoon shows is Uncle Sam standing on the map of China while Europe's imperialist nations try to, try to cut out pieces of China. This image plays a strong role because it shows how America and Europe going into China and also how they are influencing this source relates to the thesis because it shows how the men, which are the imperialist nations, and uh, America, which shuns Uncle Sam, are sh are showing a strong interest in taking over countries such as China. Uh, this shows how there is a lot of economic and military power coming from America and Europe in order to take over these countries. Taking over big countries as China helps bring the influence of industrialization in Asia because many Big, small countries will look into these big countries and piggyback right onto them. This relates to theme three governance because as you can tell in the, in the political cartoon, Europe and America have a plan to take over a certain part of Asia, which is China. In order to take over the country, you need to take over the governance because governing the country is taking over control and being able to put influences on the country. This source relates to this source gives us a point of view because it shows how the European powers and the American powers at the time were willing to work alongside each other to conquer China. It's another source that also falls into the time period when everything was going on and in invading Asia. Since this is another source from the time period, you can see how the public react reacted from the situation with this political cartoon. Our next piece of historical evidence is a secondary source, which is a graph of the GDPs of different regional areas throughout different time periods. As you can see on the graph, the pattern shows that the more Asian economies grew, the more significant their roles would be in the different revolutions. The graph relates to the thesis because it shows the growth of economies in Asia and how industrialization affected the different total market values of goods and services provided by Asia's economy. The visual of the graph also helps with the comparisons of the growth of other places such as Europe and the Americas. The graph also demonstrates how during the beginning of the first couple industrial revolutions, Asia didn't really have a major role until after they were more influenced from Europe and North America by their machinery and inventions. This connects to the thesis by showing that other parts of the world had impacts on the growth of industrialization in Asia. And we said that this connects to theme four because as Asia's society developed and started to become involved in industrialization, it affected the way that Asia produced and exchanged more goods. For our last piece of historical evidence, we have a picture of many weapons such as cannons and firearms that were made from steel. Weapons had been used to defeat internal and external adversaries. More pieces of technology that had been made during the Asian industrialization were steamships that made it easier to travel and transport goods. The source relates to the thesis because the source shows many different mechanisms that had advanced China's nation. The process of getting the tools were not easy, but the weapons helped them gain industrial powers. The source relates to theme six, technology and innovation, because it shows how tools and technology improves the transportation and communication in Asia. 
Weapons and tools had mainly helped navigation to import raw materials and military technologies. This source gives us a point of view of how China was able to transport goods to protect their government. The source shows how weapons, tools, and steamships made it easier for people during this time to get their resources, protect themselves, and what they used to make a lot of these tools. Conclusion There were many impacts on Asia that influenced industrialization and the growth of the economy. The main roots of influence came from Europe and the Americas, where some of the machinery made was passed on to Asia as well. Some of them were the use of interchangeable parts, the Bessemer steel production process, and the assembly line for mass production, which helped significantly increase manufacturing, output, and production systems. Now we have the conclusion to our big questions. The first question, what influences did North America bring to Asia during their own industrialization? North America influenced Asia through the Philippine-American War by bringing over machinery, specifically textile mills, because of the great number of rivers and streams they had. The second question, what type of technologies helped the productivity during the Asian industrialization? The main techniques were machines that would help workers improve their crafts, such as coal production machines or machines that would help to grow crops for trade. And the last question, what influences did Europe bring to Asia during their own industrialization? One of the main influences were machinery, such as the spinning jenny, steam engines, and railroads, which helped influence Asia's industrial growth. On this last slide, we just added the different sources and websites that we used to research about our topic. And we also corresponded the different slides that the information is shown on. But overall, this is the end of our presentation. We hope you guys learned something that you didn't already know about the process of industrialization in Asia.